Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 5 of our Geometry Dash game which we're making on Scratch 3. Now in parts 1 to 4 we did quite a lot and made up pretty much our entire course and in this video what I'll be doing is I will make sure that our player movement at least works on the ground level. Now in case you've not watched parts 1 to 4, I will leave a card for you right here so that you can catch up with all the videos. So let's start off. Um, in this video, like I mentioned, I'll be dealing with the player and I'll be making a lot of changes, especially with the stage. So uh, I'm going to actually just remove all of this and instead of broadcasting tech, I'm just going to broadcast start game. Okay, so broadcast a uh, new message call this start game. Now, uh, all the ticks are going to be broadcasted from within the player, which you'll start to see in a minute. Um, let's start off with the init anyway. So when we do receive init, um, what I'm going to do is first of all, clear all my graphic effects. And the reason I'm doing this is because later on when the player is, you know, crashing onto the obstacles, we'll be um, changing his ghost effect. And um, uh, we'd want to undo all of that, obviously, when we restart the game and hence we clear the graphic effects. So after we're done with that, um, it's important we also point in the right direction because this direction is going to be constantly changing. So point in direction 90. And after this, um, we're going to have, uh, as you can see in the costumes, we have two different costumes. So after this, we'll be switching to the first ground player costume. So head over to looks, say switch costume to ground player. And after this, we can set up his location. So we'll be going to X negative 152 and our Y position is going to be negative 64. All right. And uh, I'm going to set up a couple of variables here. So the first one, um, these, the first two should be obvious. So it's going to be X. The second one is going to be Y. Remember that they are for this sprite only. And uh, the third one, I'm going to call this Y velocity or Y well for short. Um, you'll start to see what this does. This is very useful when we're jumping. So I'm going to hide those three one by one. And uh, let's set them. So I'm going to set Y velocity to zero. Uh, I'm going to set the X and Y position to its current X and Y coordinates. So that's going to be negative 152 for X and uh, for Y, it's going to be negative 64. All right. So that's negative 64. And uh, I'm also going to create a new variable called has jumped. This is going to be a Boolean variable. So I'm going to follow it uh, up with a question mark and set it once again for the sprite only. Uh, let's hide that and let's set has jumped here, um, set has jumped here to be yes, okay? And uh, uh, I know I'm setting it to be yes because the player is going to fall down a bit and hence this just makes a little bit of sense. So um, once you have all of this in place, uh, you can just show the player because at the beginning the player will show. Uh, and let's get into the start game message now. This is when we receive a net and uh, you can say when we receive new message, start game. So here I'm going to create a vital new variable and this variable is called game over. And this is going to be a Boolean variable, which is constantly going to be checking if we have, you know, ended the game. Um, let me head over to um, the stage right now and I'm going to set this here. So I'm going to set game over to no and it's very crucial that you do this within the init. So set game over to no. Let's head back into the player and uh, I'm going to have this little repeat until message. So let's put that here and we'll be repeating until the game over variable turns to yes. So that basically controls this entire game. So grab the game over from the variables category and put that right there. Um, so within this, we'll be having multiple things. Okay, so we'll be having two different engines. Uh, so the first one, uh, let me actually just create the engines quickly. So the first one is called the player engine and I will run without screen refresh. This is very important. And um, the second one is called go to coordinates. Um, this thing is going to be a little bit different, but simpler. Uh, so go to coordinates. There we go. Run without screen refresh. Perfect. So these two are the engines that we'll be using. Player engine is going to be way more complicated than the go to coordinates. Um, but basically, we'll first use the player engine, which will deal with, you know, um, it's basically going to make sure that we have the exact X and Y position to go to. And once we do have that uh, X and Y position, what we can do is we will set, okay, and this is important. We will set scroll X. Now remember that scroll X is the variable which controls uh, where all of these clones show. So you can click on anything except the background and you will start to see that variable within the go to coordinates function. Uh, and we will set scroll X here 
to be whatever our x position is added to 160. And the reason I'm having 160 is because I want to start scroll x off with zero, you know, so it makes sense with this is the x value. Now, it would probably make more sense for me to set x to negative 168. So, I mean, you could do that. I'm going to set it to negative 152. And this would have a slight lag, but it would turn, uh, it would become all right in just a second. So, no one would really notice this, but I will set it to x plus 160. Okay, it's just a round number. Ideally, what I would need to do is I will need to set it to this minus a, uh, this plus 8. So, it's going to be negative 144. That's, that should be my ideal one, but Never mind about that, I'm going to set it to um, x plus 160. Uh, and after this, I will have a scroll x checker. So in case my scroll x is already, you know, too much, and it means my player is nearing the end of the course, in that case, I'd want the scroll x to stop. I'd like the player to go to the middle of the uh, screen, and then we'd end the game. So in this case, uh, we'll be having the scroll x variable uh, exceed. Uh, so you'll need to grab a greater than. Uh, the number is going to be 1760, so basically 7000, okay, uh, for our x value. So if scroll x is greater than that, um, then what we'll do is basically uh, set scroll x to be 1760. So we don't really move beyond that. Set scroll x to 1760, and uh, then what we can do is we can go to the coordinates, and finally we can broadcast tick. So that's the whole point we broadcast tick from the player itself. So broadcast, tick and wait, and once everything is set, we can repeat this process. Um, now this, when game over um, becomes uh, false, and we'll do that in the next video, don't worry about that. Uh, we'll basically, you know, broadcast in it and start game once again. So that's the whole idea. Um, now let's get into the player engine. So the player engine is fairly simple. We'll be having two different engines within this. So the first one is called the X engine, and this is very simple, okay? Uh, we'll run without screen refresh. And the second one is called ground engine. Or uh, we'll be adding in a third engine later on, which is called the air engine, which is gonna make sure that the sprite moves on air properly, but that's gonna be for a, whole, uh, for a whole other video. So within the play engine, I'll first have the X engine, and then I will have the ground engine. Now my ground engine within it is going to have an engine called the Y engine and this one is once again going to run without screen refresh and we'll be taking in an input of the Y velocity. So we'll be using that variable here, uh, click OK and uh, we'll use this later, okay? So um, let's set up each one by turn now. Let me first set go to coordinates because that's by far the easiest. So we'll just go to here, so uh, say go to, here we will be uh, and I think we didn't have that. Anyway, so let me just have a normal one. We'll, we'll be going to X minus scroll X and we will be going to Y, okay? Oops, this was supposed to be the way. So X minus scroll X and Y is just Y. That's it, so that's gonna be the entire go to coordinates. Um, let's deal with the, um, let's, let's put the player engine here, okay? And let's deal with the X engine now. That's the second simplest. So within our X engine, all we'll be doing is changing X by what we were changing our scroll x by within the stage. So that's just gonna be change x by eight, and automatically we'll also be changing scroll x by eight before every single tick. So we don't even have to worry about scroll x right now. As long as we change x, scroll x is going to change automatically. So this we have it here, and um, you know, the ground engine is probably gonna be the most complicated. So we'll be first of all within the ground engine, you know, it's a ground engine, so we'll switch costume to ground player, and after this, we'll be checking for a key pressed, okay? So head over to control, grab an if then, and we'll be checking if two keys are pressed. So you can put them within an or, and then head over to sensing and grab the touching, uh, no, key uh, pressed block. So we'll be having if key space pressed, or if key up arrow is pressed. Now in either of those two cases, I'm going to check once again, if our has jumped variable is still no. If has jumped is yes, then it means that the player is currently in the air. And if he is in the air, then I do not want him to jump. So let me have this as has jumped is equal to yes. In this case, let us just set the Y velocity to be 20 and everything is going to be automatic. So set Y velocity to 20, perfect. Now each and every time we um, have a tick, we'll be going through the ground engine 
and basically we'll have to decrease our y velocity so that our player comes back down it's gravity basically so we'll be changing y velocity each and every time by negative three now in case we're touching a trampoline uh, which we already have so maybe i'll add that right here so if we are touching trampoline then what we can do is we can set our y velocity to be something a little bit higher maybe i'll do set y velocity to um, 25 instead of 20 i think that should be a little bit better and after we're done with all this we can use the y engine with the y velocity variable in it so this is the whole idea and the y engine is going to basically move our stuff so let me take the y engine out to the right because this is quite some long code here and this video is probably going to be quite long because of this but i hope you don't mind so let's start this off so first of all we want to make sure that we change the y variable by the y velocity and we also want the player to be constantly you know twirling around while he's jumping and rotating so we can change um you know uh, change this direction in a clockwise direction uh, i'm just going to go ahead with 15 degrees but you could probably perfect this now since we are changing them it's important to note that you know this whole block is a run without screen refresh block which means that we won't be constantly seeing him and neither will the computer know his position so it's important that we go to coordinates each time we're basically making any kind of change um, so go to coordinates uh, because we've changed our y here and the y uh, the y um, variable doesn't affect the y position unless we use this block so use go to coordinates and after this let us check if we are either touching the floor or we're touching the platform in both of these cases we want the platform or the floor to behave as some surface on which we can sit on top of so grab an or um head over to sensing now and grab two touching so first let's see if touching flows and second let's see if touching platforms so if touching platforms there we go in this case and this is probably you know the most um most useful block of code because we'll be pointing in direction and now you can uh, head over to uh, operators you can grab a multiplied by okay and you can see multiplied by 90 and within you know the first block what you can do is grab a round so grab a round and uh, you can see direction uh, this will be in the motion category divided by uh, once again head over to operators divided by 90 and this code is pretty smart okay so the way this is basically working oops i just keep messing it up so the way this works is we first know what our direction is let's just say our direction is something like 100 degrees um we need it when we touch the floor to constantly point in one of these four ways we need it to be this way um let me uh, change the direction to show you we need it to be this way we need it to be this way or we need it to be this way so it's got to be one of these four ways and uh, this code just does that so in case let's say our direction is 100 then 100 divided by 90 is going to be something more than one but that's going to be rounded off to one and hence 90. so what we're really doing here is we're rounding off to the nearest 90 uh, instead of the nearest whole number but it's a little bit uh, i mean it, we just have to uh, have this tricky way to go around the fact that we cannot round off to the nearest 90 for example so that's the whole point of this code i do hope you understood now we've made a change here so we can use the go to coordinates once again and uh, go to the co uh, go to coordinates function once again and after this we can check if we are touching the flows or if we're touching the platforms so now let me grab um an if no it's going to be i believe an if uh it's going to be an if else so grab an if else so see if touching floors here so first of all this is what we'll be checking if we are touching the flows then you can grab once again another if else so if the y velocity is greater than zero this is going to be the first case uh it means we're basically jumping up onto the platform in this case what we basically want is we'd want the game to end so we can just set game over to yes so set game over to yes and that's pretty much all you need to do within this so in case this is not the case and uh, y velocity is negative that means that the player is falling from above and hence we need to make some y correction so uh, we will this time grab a repeat until so grab a repeat until from control and we'll be repeating until we are not touching the platform so we'll be uh, slowly moving 
this guy back up to the point that we are no longer touching the floors. I meant the floors, not the platform, by the way. All right, so repeat until not touching platform. And here we will change Y by one each and every time. And remember, whenever we're changing Y, we need to use the go to coordinates function. So go to coordinates, uh, and this will make sure, you know, we're constantly updating. And uh, we can also do two other things. So first of all, we can set, um, set the Y velocity to be zero. And we can also set the has jumped variable to be uh, no, because at this point we've basically landed on a platform and hence we have, we are no longer in the air basically. So set has jumped to no, and that's pretty much it. So this whole thing can actually be duplicated and we can just change this to platforms and that's pretty much going to be it. So we'll save a lot of time uh, duplicating it instead of doing it um, basically the uh, same code, just changing this to platforms. So change all of that to platforms and within this final else statement, what you need to do is set has jumped to yes. Okay, set has jumped to yes. And this is the whole point, right? We, uh, in case we're not touching the flows or we're not touching the platforms, then I mean, we are in the air. So has jumped is set to yes. So perfect. I think that's pretty much all the code we need. And you can see that we are scrolling and uh, now my um, jumps work kind of well. And you can see that when we are up, you know, game over ends and we see no output and my computer is also a little bit laggy. So you can't see the jumps as smoothly, although I'm holding down my keys, but the jumps work. And that is the main point. Uh, I'm still trying to get myself on top of one of those platforms. So there we go. You can see that the jumps work. In the next video, we'll be dealing with restarting the game and uh, maybe also a little bit with the final positions uh, so that we can finally move on with the end screens. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.